Hello, and welcome to the debut video of Moth to a Game. In this video, if you haven't, t if you couldn't tell by the title, we're going to be going over classic games and games that people typically think of when they think of board games. Okay, so first on our list is a crowd favorite, and I don't know anybody that doesn't like this game. It's called Battleship. My edition is a Star Wars battleship. And we got it for a dollar ninety nine. Dollar ninety nine. If you want board games, you can go get them at Goodwill sometimes and get a snagged deal. I made sure to make sure all the pieces were there, and when I was going over, only one piece was missing. Uh, so every piece has this little thing right here that attaches the Star Wars spaceship to the piece that attaches to the board, and just one of them was missing, and I. It wasn't a problem for me because, you know, that's just one little piece for a $1.99 classic game of Battleship. Uh, in Battleship, uh, two player, it's only a two player game. You will take part in a, well, typically it's a naval battle, but in this edition it is a space battle between the First Order and the Resistance. But in normal games, it's just a typical military battle at sea, I guess. Uh, looking at my box, I noticed that I don't have rules, and I'm not even sure if Battleship comes with rules, but I'm sure it is. Uh, so players will place their three, their four different tokens on the field. There is a four, to, uh, four hit ship, a five hit ship, a three hit ship, and a two hit ship. And they will each place them on the board where the other player cannot see them. You can place them anywhere on the board, even if I suppose you could even do it in a cheating way if you could find a way, but I don't think that you can, and I think that that's pretty frowned upon. So, put some up here. Yeah, <laughs> puts them on the wrong side of the board. <laughs> uh, so, one by one, you will take turns saying out numbers G and letters. So, G8, or H1, or A3, or whatever. Kind of like bingo. Kind of like bingo, yes. Uh, so you'll say it, and the uh, the other player will put either a white, or you will put a white token or a red, or not a token, I think these are called meeples. Pegs. Pegs, yes, pegs. I knew there was a reason you were here. Uh, you will put the pegs. So let's say Autumn uh, told me B3, and I had a ship at B3. I would tell her hit, and I would mark a red uh, peg on my ship, and she would mark a red peg on her board. B3? Then, yeah, B3. If it's a miss, you put a white peg. So you can monitor where your enemy has launched missiles, or bombs, or proton torpedoes. Uh, and you can figure out where exactly they put those. Uh, so you guys will each take turns, one after the other, trying to find the other person's boats. Uh, the first one to sink all the other players' boats wins the game, and that's basically it. That's Battleship. It's a very quick game, I feel. By Hasbro. By Hasbro. Hasbro Gaming. Is uh, it Hasbro? Yeah, Hasbro. Oh, I called it Hasbro. Hasbro? I thought there was another one. Nope, just Hasbro. Uh, Battleship is a fun game for two players. Uh, yeah, it is seven and up, and made in the U.S. of A. Uh, yeah, it's a fun little quick game. Not very in-depth, so if you're looking for an in-depth game, I, I would look elsewhere, because Battleship is not the one.
All right. So moving along, the next game we're going to talk about in our list of classic games is one that many people do not like. It's a game that has a negative emotion to it, I'd say. And that game is the fast dealing property card game, or property trading game of Monopoly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love Monopoly. It's a game that easy to pick up. Everybody knows how to play it, basically. A lot of people have house rules that make the game take forever, but it's a fun game. It's for two to six players. It is eight and up. And if you're anything like me, and, you know, Hasbro likes to make their money, so they license the game out all the time. But I got Spaceopoly, a property trading game that is out of this world. Uh, it's a knockoff, I'm not gonna lie. It's a knockoff from Light for the Sky. I've never heard of them besides this one game. Uh, it's the same game, but instead of house hotels, they have like comets and meteors or something like that. It's a fun little game, you know. Basically the same thing. But we also have -na 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 -na. Game of Thrones Monopoly. Uh, so there's another one that we have to go in the list. And then last but not least, we have The Legend of Zelda. Do -do 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 -do. Monopoly. I have four different Opoly games. And uh, I gotta be honest, the regular is my favorite. Uh, I know it's not mega difficult to understand how much rent is when it's doubled when you own the whole color, but this one just tells you what it is. You don't have to do a little bit of math, and you know, who wants to do math? Uh, it also, when you mortgage properties, it tells you the exact price to pay back. That is a little bit more than it usually is. I mean, it's like 10 or 20% more than what you get from it. Uh, on these cards, they have it. On the rest of these, they don't. And so, to me, that just makes it a little bit better of a game to work that way. So in Monopoly, you will play as one token that are very weird. There's a dog, a choo-choo train, new ones have ducks, cats, boots, race cars, top hats, artillery cannons, battleships, irons, tons of things. You, and you can grab any other weird thing you might have around the house, a thumbtack even. Uh, and you will take turns rolling dice and then going around the board. Uh, so what you'll do, if you don't know how to play Monopoly, is you'll land on a space, so you might land on Boardwalk, and then you'll have to go through this deck of cards and find Boardwalk, and then you can purchase it. So Boardwalk is $400, and you might grab this $500 and turn it into the bank, and now you own Boardwalk. Get your $100 back. That's another $500. Hey, Thank you. What a kind banker. Uh, but you'll just go around the board, taking turns, trying to get as much property as you can. First couple rounds are usually you trying to get property, landing on spaces, buying the spaces, you know. But as the game develops and you get later, you want to make sure to do trades if you don't have a monopoly. So the goal is to get all the same color. So you probably won't get one on your first time around. It's actually impossible unless you're going for, like, the blue and then you roll snake eyes at Park Place. So you go to and you get bored more. Uh, but other than that, you're going to have to go around a couple times. Uh, if you get all of the spaces, so let's say you get the Mediterranean and Baltic, you can start building on those. You can build houses. Now, houses will give you more money in the long run than they cost because when people land on them, they will up the rent. So, for instance, let's look at Virginia Avenue, which is over here on this side of the board. Rent is $12 there. That's not that bad. $12? I wish my rent was $12. But if you have the whole color set, so if you get all three of the paints, you will have $24 of rent on that one space. So that's double what you were getting before. And then if you add houses, which houses on this side of the board are 100. It goes 50, 100, 150, 200. On this side of the board, they're 100. And with one house, rent goes up to $60. That's more than double. Then it goes up to 180 then 500, then 700. You have a max of four houses per property. Now, at the end, when you get all four houses, you can upgrade to a hotel. Now, hotels will give you even more. So in this one, you get 900, which is a $200 jump from the previous one for only $100 more. So it's a better interest rate. But, but, 
there's only so many houses in the game. So a strategy that I like to try to do if I can swing it is to buy all the houses, get four houses, and then once they're out of houses, we're out of houses. People can't make me pay a lot of rent when I land on them because there's no houses to buy. So while they're landing on me paying $700, $800, I'm landing on them and paying 20 bucks, you know? Who can be 20 bucks? And slowly and slowly, they lose their money and I get my money and they lose and I win the game. No, 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 secret. <laughs> Wasn't a secret, I've said it before when we played. Another thing is if you play with people who don't like to trade, it makes it very hard to end the game. Yeah, she's not very good at trading. I will make sure that if I'm trading with you to get a Monopoly, you're going to get a Monopoly, or at least I'm going to try to convince you that it's in your best interest to not get one. Uh, but that's one of the ways that the game takes forever. If you have no Monopolies, people aren't paying any, any money, you know? Every time you go on the board, you get $200. If you're paying max $50 over here on one place instead of... 300 at times, you know, you're not going to be losing money. You're going to be getting more money as you go around. Uh, also, the thing a lot of people do, and I've, I've done it before myself, putting money in the middle. So if you land on luxury tax and you have to pay $100 and you throw it in the middle, or any of the other taxes, you throw it in the middle, you know, you, people put 500 in the middle to start off, and then as the taxes go, yeah, throw more money out here in the middle, yeah. And then when people get on free parking over here, they get that money from the middle. And while that can be fun and that can, that can prolong the game, it's not an actual rule of the game, it's a house rule. And that makes the game take forever. Because you might have someone like Autumn who has $50 left and is coming around to my corner of the red who is going to probably lose if they land on that or, you know, it's going to take a miracle for her to not lose. Suddenly she lands on free parking, she's got... $2,000, you know, she's in the game for another three, four turns. It just, it prolongs the game and it isn't an official rule. Uh, another rule that people like to do, but isn't an official rule, is when you're in jail, you cannot collect money. And that's not true. You get all your rent the same if you're in jail. Late game jail is the best place to be because you're not going around the board for potentially risking paying people, but you are still getting your money. Those are just some of the tips and tricks on how to play Monopoly. I know a lot of people don't like Monopoly. Uh, I'm pretty sure originally it was just a show something about capitalism and its problems or something and how it's hard to build up from nothing. But I personally like the game. That's basically it. And we're going to move on to the next game. Oh yeah, I forgot. In my issue of Monopoly, I got a speed die. And this really speeds up the game. With the speed die, you have three new sides. Two of them are the same and one of them is different. One of them is a school bus. I don't know if you can see it, but one of them is a school bus. With the school bus, let's say I roll eight. I rolled a six and a two. With the school bus, I can either go six places or two places or all eight. I get to decide. And my personal favorite one is the little Monopoly guy. There's two of him on the board, I'm on it, and they replace the four and the five. I assume that the school bus replaces the six. But the Monopoly guy, well, early game is very, very good. So if I roll, and I let's say I own Baltic Avenue, and I land there, and I roll the Monopoly guy, I gotta go to the next unknown space, no matter where it is on the board. It could be the space right beside me. I'm gonna zoop, 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 all the way there. Now, while that's really good early game to make sure that all the properties get bought really quick, late game what it does is if you land on you and your old monopoly guy you're safe on your own place you must go to the next owned place and pay the rent so that'll make the game speed up because now people are paying more and people have more property at the beginning uh, I think it is a very good addition to monopoly and it really speeds up the game and then it also adds there's a one a two and a three on here that will just get you moving a little bit faster even if you don't roll one of the special dice. <laughs> All right, so our last and final game in this video is the classic murder mystery game, Clue. Clue is a three to six player game, also made by Hasbro, which maybe I'll just call this the Hasbro Games video. And they do seem to have a monopoly on the classic board games. Uh, 
So Clue is a murder mystery game where you take the role of one of six people at a mansion party, and someone has turned up missing. Uh, or not missing, someone is dead, and you must figure out who did it. What's weird is that you might be playing as Colonel Mustard, and you're the killer and you didn't know. It's crazy. It's crazy how that kind of stuff can happen these days. Okay, so, setting up Clue, this mansion. You have six characters to choose from. You can be, okay, let me rephrase this. There's six characters to choose from, but their names are all messed up from the original Clue. Originally there was Miss Peacock, Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, Mr. Green, Colonel Mustard, and Miss White. And now they've just eliminated all that. Instead of Colonel Mustard, you're just Mustard. Whose name is Mustard? Not first, not last, just Mustard. Hey, I'm Mustard. There's also Plum. Hey, I'm Plum. Scarlet, you know. Oh, uh, Scarlet's not really that bad. Peacock and White aren't that bad. Green and uh, But Mustard, Mustard. Anyway. So you pick one of the six characters who I'm going to refer to as their original names of Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum, and whatnot. You pick one and you place all of them in the center of the game. Then you will each look at this. There are all these places. You will take one, shuffle them up. Don't mess them up. Shuffle them. I keep flipping them around. I'm not very good at shuffling, apparently. But you shuffle up the decks and you take one of them put it off to the side. And you do the same with the deck of, what, what do you get? Character cards. Character cards, and you do the same with the weapon cards. Shuffle them up, give them a nice little shuffle. There's not a whole lot of cards here to shuffle, but just make sure you don't know what it is. You put it off to the side. Then you take those three cards, and you put them in the secret clue envelope. Clue. Go ahead and open that bad boy up. Slide the three cards in, and then put it off to the side somewhere under your shoe, in your pocket, just anywhere you want to throw it. Just make sure that nobody can look at it during the game. Then you're going to take the three decks of cards that you have, you're going to shuffle them all together, get them nice and mixed up. You don't want to get too many next to each other because then people will get too much information. So you're going to go ahead and shuffle these. Give them a nice good shuffle, maybe do one of, one of these bad boys on the table, you know. Then you're gonna, you know, keep on shuffling. You gotta get these real shuffled. Make sure they're all mixed up. All mixed up. Go ahead and give me a cut. We're professional out here. Making sure we do this the right way. All right. Then you'll pass them out to all your players. So since we don't have enough players, we're not gonna be able to pass them out correctly. But you just pass them out, you know. Refer to your rule book to see. In this case, we're gonna leave three, four cards out. The bedroom, so we know it's not in the bedroom. The dagger, so, you know, that's cool, not the dagger. Not the candlestick, if I stop throwing stuff. Not the candlestick, and not the pistol. So that, that gives us a lot of options for weapons, so this game may not take long. The way to play, you roll the die. I rolled 11. Pretty good. So I'm Colonel Mustard and I can basically move wherever I want. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I make it to the bedroom. Now when I'm in the bedroom, I would make a guess. So I might guess Colonel Mustard in the bedroom with the candlestick. So I know that the candlestick is over here and nobody has it. But I'm trying to figure out the other two. So the way the, the, way the clue works is that the, the cards would all be passed out and there'd be at least three people. So I might say, you know, Colonel Mustard, Candlestick in the bedroom. And then if the person to my left had either of those cards, they would show them to me discreetly. Then I'd write it down on my piece of paper to indicate that I know that it's not that. Uh, and you just go around, so that would be my turn, and pass to the next person. They would roll the die, they'd move to a room, make a guess. You always have to guess whatever room you're in. You cannot guess the bedroom and be in the dining room. That's just, not something you're allowed to do. Uh, there are also secret passages you can use. So the bedroom has a secret passage that leads to the living room. The garage has a secret passage that leads to the kitchen. And you can use those vice versa. So you go around the board, basically just asking questions. Hmm, 
I think it was Mr. Green in the garage with the candlestick, or the pistol, or whatever. Uh, and once you've tried to you have narrowed it down and you think you know who did it, of the what, the when, and the where, you go ahead and you can make an accusation on your turn. You look in the envelope and find out if you won or if you lost. If you won, you won the game, congrats. Everybody's probably mad at you because they wanted to win. If you lost, people are probably laughing at you. Uh, when you lose, you still have to play with your cards. So you don't get to make guesses anymore. But let's say I lost and Autumn was playing and Autumn made a guess and she said the living room and I had that card. I'd still have to show her the card, but I wouldn't be playing anymore other than that. Uh, that's basically it, that's Clue. Well, I hope you enjoyed this debut video from Moth to a Game. Uh, I had fun talking to you guys about the three classic games we have here. Uh, next game will probably be a little bit more of an in-depth game than these. My cat is chewing on a piece of cardboard <laughs> on the floor over there. Yep. Oh, you heard me talking about you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and let me know how you felt about this video. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but please, uh, I would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe, uh, like the video, and maybe share it on whatever social media you'd like to share it on. Let me know any comments you have, if you think I was terrible at the game, if maybe I explained Battleship in the worst way, if I lied and said that you play Clue wrong, and I don't know how to play Clue apparently. Go ahead and just let me know in the comments below, and uh, I should have a video, another video up in two weeks, or a week, two weeks, every two weeks. Well, I'll probably have another one here soon, I'll probably do two, maybe, I don't know. We're, I'm new at this, so we're trying to figure it out. But I'll probably do a video every other week. That'd probably be what I'll do. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any games you, would you guys would like me to play or show you, uh, I can do if I own the game. So just let me know. And uh, thanks. Bye.